Guys, this little silicone thing is gonna change your Weber cooking experience forever. I just made a very outlandish claim, didn't I? Well, I'll explain and I'm sure you're gonna agree. Let me start by giving you some insight who I am and why I'm qualified to tell you what will make your cooking game much better. Number one, I am one of the top chefs in the entire world. When Gordon Ramsay has a new recipe he wants to try out, he runs it by me. Bloody hell, I mean, that's what I call a burger. Just kidding. I'm an average home cook who absolutely loves to grill. I like to take classic recipes from all over the globe and share them with you guys. I use artisan techniques, classic cooking methods, and I make sure that the recipes I share with you are absolutely delicious. If you've seen some of my other videos, you know that I absolutely love cooking on the Weber kettle. I love using wood and charcoal. Now what's the biggest pain point, at least one of the biggest that I've found? Well, there's two. The first one is the fact that you always have to lift up the lid and when it's hot, you gotta put it down somewhere Ah, my hand, that's hot! The normal Weber kettle tries to address this by having a little hook on the lid that connects to the kettle. It's a little hard to maneuver when you're cooking to get it to sit properly. That's my number one issue. And the second little pain spot is whenever you're cooking with a probe, it always gets pinched on the cover and the kettle. Now the problem with pinching it is not only you don't get a proper seal throughout the cook, but you also risk damaging your probes. The Weber Smoky Mountain does address this by having a grommet. I think I fixed it this time, grommet. A grommet is basically a silicone piece that's on the side of the kettle that allows you to pass probes through without interfering between the lid and the kettle. So when that lid is closed, no pinching and no worries. The Weber Smoky Mountain can come with one, but this video is really to show you how you can add multiple, uh, but it's more geared towards the normal Weber kettle. Now, huge caution. This video is going to be modifying your grill. I'm gonna be showing you how to actually drill into the kettle itself. Oh. Mm. Which will avoid your warranty. And if you follow the steps properly, you won't screw up and trust me, it'll be worth it. If you're scared of drilling holes or you've never really used power tools, don't worry, go try it on something small, like a little piece of wood, a small sheet of, of metal, something small so that you can get a good feel for it before you go ahead and start drilling into the Weber. On my Weber kettle, I've actually made a few holes. I've made one for a smoke port. I've made one for now the grommet. So I have no trouble drilling holes right through. So let's talk about things you're gonna need. Number one, obviously you're gonna need your Weber kettle. Number two, you're gonna need the grommet. I'll leave a link for one in the description section. You're gonna need a power drill. This can't be done by hand. You'll need a drill step bit. A drill step bit is a drill bit that has multiple steps. And why it's so great is because as you go, it punctures into the next level, the next size. And we wanna go all the way to one and a quarter inches. You'll need a little bit of painter's tape or that green tape you'll find at the dollar store. And to polish everything up, a high heat barbecue paint. I'll leave the link also for that one in the description. So, real easy, let's get started. Step one, taking your measurements. First thing is find out where you wanna put the grommet. Where do you wanna pass probes in and out of that grill? Not the ideal to put it on the cover, so usually put it on the kettle itself. What I'm recommending is you put the grate down and that way you know where the hole is. Use a ruler or measuring tape to find out exactly where the one and a quarter inch will sit it should be above the grate, but below the lip of the kettle. Now go ahead and add some painter's tape where you're gonna be drilling. The tape is gonna help from the drill walking. A drill walking means you start drilling and then all of a sudden it goes and starts walking away. Another way to prevent walking is you start off with a small drill bit just to do a pilot hole all the way through. It'll help stabilize it and push its way right through. Step two is drilling the hole. Like I just mentioned, you wanna start with a pilot hole. This will really help stabilize things. And after the pilot hole, the step bit goes on, full speed ahead and start drilling one step at a time. Make sure that you take a look at that step bit and find out where that one and a quarter mark is. Now to avoid the shards of metal going, opening up like this on the inside of your grill, do a few steps on the outside, then a few steps on the inside, but the final step needs to be done on the outside so that it has a shape going inwards towards the grill. Now that you've drilled your hole, measure that the grommet will go in. If it's a little short and one and a quarter, go back in and drill one more step. Now that you know that it, the grommet will fit, don't apply it yet. Set it aside, time to get that paint, which gets us to step three, painting. 
After drilling, now you have exposed metal. We're gonna be using the high heat paint to coat where we just drilled. I'm actually gonna be painting up my entire kettle to give it a nice, beautiful matte look. And the first step is on the inside of the pit, you're gonna put some more painter's tape just to block the hole and spray off some high heat paint over that hole so that the inside gets coated. And then if you wanna paint the entire grill like I'm doing, you just go ahead, slow, even motions throughout. And when you're done, it should look like this. The reason to paint is not only gonna make it look nice, but it also helps prevent rust. Nothing worse than having a beautiful grill be destroyed by some rust because you made a little hole in it. Let the paint dry for a couple hours, and then it's time for step four, applying the grommet. The grommet is gonna be a little bit hard to get in on its own. So the best way is you add a little bit of oil, any type of oil, and you just squeeze it in there. It should fit beautifully. Take a little cloth with some hot water, wipe away any excess oil, and it's as simple as that. Your grommet is installed, and now you can start grilling. Take a look at how I'm passing it through. You see how incredible that is? The wire goes right through the kettle. Isn't that incredible? I love it. This is by far one of the best installations or modifications that I've done to my kettle. That's it, that's all. Straight and to the point. You have a grommet installed and it's gonna be changing your Weber cooking experience forever. Go ahead and check out this video where I review the Spider Grill's Venom attachment onto the Weber kettle helps control airflow within the grill, absolutely incredible. Now, if you have any questions or comments, let me know in the comment section. As I mentioned, all links to different items are in the description section. And if you like my videos, you like this type of content, subscribe and ring the bell. Trust me, you wanna keep up with our videos because we have a lot coming out that you're gonna absolutely love. All right, I gotta get started on the next one. I'll see you soon.